Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Also known as the reason why my very traditionally Asian parents somehow decided that I am not a good candidate for arranged marriage? Huh, what made them think that? Uh, anyways, today we are talking all about airline liveries. These are extremely important as for every single airline, these are the first impression and sometimes the only impressions they get to make towards the public. A livery is basically how an airline decides to paint their airplanes. So you can see why it is very important as they are giant moving billboards that advertise the airline as well as their brand towards every single person in the world. And wherever they fly, the livery comes with them. So today I have gathered more than 50 airlines from all around the globe and we're gonna put them onto the test of a tier list. But before we begin, I need to explain a few details. And the first question we need to ask ourselves is that what makes a good livery? And I think it's divided into two major factions. The first one for the big major global players and the second one for the small regional airlines. The first one for the big global players is that their combination of the font, the color scheme they choose, as well as the logo need to form a cohesive whole that advertises their brand. Because they fly to everywhere, they need to have a more universal appeal and also their impression should last for a lifetime. And for the regional small players, I think for them, they need to strive for creativity because they don't need to reach for millions upon millions of people all around the world. They just need to make sure that people see it once when they are transiting through a country and they see that livery, and they remember it for the rest of their lives. And the second point is that I think the airline should represent the country as a whole. Because for a lot of the times, the airlines are not only flying for the company, they are also flying for the nation or the region they are coming from. And the last point is that I'm trying to exclude all of the special liveries today. Because a lot of the airlines with very mundane and boring normal liveries will have jaw-droppingly beautiful and astonishing special liveries for you but even though they are just one plane out of the hundreds. So it is very rare for you to even see them, let alone write on them. So I don't think they make a really good tier list material. And of course, this is just my personal opinion. According to a lot of my friends, I have some really wacky tastes. So don't be offended if I decided that an airline that is really, really ugly in your eyes is the most beautiful thing in my entire world. So let me know in the comment section down below if there's anything that you disagree with me. But with all of that out of the way, let's begin with the first candidate on the tier list. American Airlines. The old American Airlines livery is absolutely iconic. The eagle, the double A, as well as the metallic finish at the bare bone fuselage, it is all perfect material for a livery. But the new one as they rebranded in Crisis in 2013 is, uh, how do I say this, weird. Sure, the tail is absolutely American, it is the flag, but it doesn't feature anything that is special about American Airlines. So yeah, I think it goes into B tier. And the second candidate is Aeromexico, the national airline of Mexico. And as you can see, the Eagle Knight is extremely sleek and clean and very representative of the Mesoamerican culture that Mexico is currently very, very proud of. And it is from the Aztec culture, so it is mostly situated in Mexico as well. And I really can't fault them for anything because even the red curve along the fuselage jumps out as a very nice finishing touch. So it goes into A tier. And the third airline to be put onto the list is Air Canada. This is a new logo that they are currently phasing in. And the old logo that is currently being eliminated is still very, very good. It has the dotted icy blue background and really shows where it comes from, the great white north. But still, I really prefer the newer logo they are currently having. The bold black contrast with the vibrant red and the maple leaf really, really showcases how special the airline livery is. So Air Canada gets a nice A as well. And the next one is the Alaska Airlines. And really, there's nothing I can say about this icon. It is absolutely gorgeous. The Eskimo is very representative of the Alaska culture. It is from up there and he is always smiling towards you. And the only thing that has changed since the founding of the company is that the color palette might have swapped a few times. And the most recent interpretation is a darker shade of blue with a lighter shade of green. And I think the color palette suits the airline very well as it is from the frigid north and it also has a base situated in the Pacific Northwest where it is always very green. So I have to say this absolute industry icon becomes the first S tier airline on the list. 
And now we arrived at Delta Airlines. It is one of the most memorable logos in the entire aviation industry. Not only is the name corresponding to the triangle in the logo, but also this has not changed since the 1960s. And in fact, this triangle has more than 20 revisions in the recent history. But for the current version, I don't really like it as much as the older versions because the current version with a darker shade of red with a darker shade of blue really do not stand out and seem to be very dull compared to the old version where it is a white background with a blue upper part and a red lower part, which I think is extremely iconic. So now I have to say Delta only gets a B. And just to finish up the three biggest US airlines, let's talk about United. And let me be frank, I'm not really a big fan of United Airlines logo. They took out the contrasting longitude and latitude lines and filled it in with a lighter shade of blue. Why would you want to do that? This is just more blue on top of even more blue. I really do not like it and I decided to give it a C. And next up, Spirit Airlines. Um, yeah, what can I say? It's literally a yellow background with the name plastered on top of it. And even the font looks kind of cheap. So yeah, uh, if you want to save your money by not designing any logo, it saves my time as well. Go to D. And next up, Spirit's biggest competitor, Frontier. I kind of like its logo. It is sleek, it is modern, it has a nice color scheme, but it really doesn't translate very well onto their planes because the F that is the only stylized part of the logo is kind of blocked out by the windows. Thus, it looks kind of funny because it is just a large logo, but half of it is completely destroyed and disintegrated by the windows since its placement on the fuselage is absolutely bewildering. And lastly, I think it's a really nice gesture that they put a lot of the endangered species that you can find in the United States and put them at the tail fin. But the thing is that they could have easily done it a little bit better. You see, all of the animals are facing straight towards you if you are looking at them sideways. They could have easily painted the animals looking forward in the same direction as the airplane so it looks more dynamic. Such as a bird looking forward or an animal charging forward, thus it looks much more dynamic. But now it is kind of just like a still picture framed at the end of the fuselage. So overall, I decided to give it a C. The current form of Southwest livery is really perplexing to me. Where is the heart on your livery? I can't find it anywhere. What is the point of spending millions upon millions to rebrand you into a purple heart after deciding to ditch it for almost a decade in the early 2000s and then now you decide to come back and then you spend so much money and not put them onto your livery? What is the point? These are the largest billboards you can have. Well, at least you have a nice new color scheme now, so I decided to give you a B. And next up is JetBlue Airlines. It is a rather peculiar case given the fact that JetBlue has a set of standard liveries that they randomly plaster onto every single airplane. Don't get me wrong, these are very nice liveries. But for me, I guess it is kind of inconsistent. Well, this is because JetBlue is now transitioning from a small regional player into a large global player. And sure, in New York, everyone knows JetBlue and then what kind of company ethos they are holding. But in London, in Quito, in many other places, nobody even knows what JetBlue is. And for me, that is especially ironic because I don't even remember much about their livery and I've flown with them so much. I even made a special report on the business class I was flying on their most prestigious route. You can check it out right here. And yeah, that is kind of sad, isn't it? So it goes into B tier. And to finish up North America, we have Hawaiian Airlines, another absolute iconic banger of an airline livery. The Hawaiian girl looking forwards towards the future just pumps you up with all kinds of hope. And it has not changed for a long while and I hope it stays the same forever. And the color scheme just brings you with that tropical vibe and that vacation feel. And also the little circle of flower they have on their airplanes kind of looks like the airplane is wearing a lei. So yeah, it is so cute. And it goes to S tier, of course. And to start off with South America, we have Aerolíneas Argentinas. It is the national airline of Argentina, of course. And to look at its livery, yeah, you will be hard pressed to find it out that it is actually from South America or from Argentina in general, because it is just a monotone two color design with a very generic blue and a very generic white. And looking at this even more generic shape, you will be shocked to find out that this is actually their logo, the Condor, chopped in half and only with the half of the body there. I don't know why they decide to do this. It is just a strange branding in general. Um, yeah, goes into C tier, I guess. 
And next up is Avianca, a very big major player in South America with headquarters in quite a few countries. And this is just actually the old logo. Yeah, I wish it is still looking like this because the new logo looks like this. Yeah, just red upon red upon red. It's like a bloodbath. I don't know why they decided to eliminate the iconic yellow and a little bit shades of purple, but now it just looks really, really monotonous and ugly. I don't really like it. Go to C, please. And next up, we have Latam. And in my opinion, it is what a successful company merger done right looks like. And first up, let me explain the name. Latam is the conglomerate that is the result of the merger between the Chilean airlines LAN as well as the Brazilian airline called TAM. So thus, they combine together, becomes Latam. And second is that Latam now actually means Latin America since they have headquarters uh, in all kinds of countries ranging from Peru all the way to Argentina, Brazil, Chile, and Ecuador, and so on. So yeah, they are now a very, very big player in South America. And thirdly is that the color scheme of Tam is the red as well as the Lan color scheme, which is the dark blue, come together to become the new color scheme of the new airline. And I think it looks very, very beautiful. And the logo looks like the company's continent, the South American continent. And I think the river motif translates into the tail fin very, very well. So overall, I think it is a very, very beautiful design and very nice livery and goes into A tier. And let's begin Europe with British Airways. I kind of like the new ribbon logo given the fact that it is more sleek and modern and very representative of this royal country with rich past and colonial history, but I really do not like the tail fin. It looks like someone came up with a design within three minutes. Just a quarter of a British flag? Come on, I could do that better when I was in primary school. And also that glossing effect? That sucks in my opinion because it's supposed to represent the flag waving in the air but now it looks like just a paint job half finished since it is all white underneath. So yeah, I really don't think it represents Britain enough so maybe something more British like this? Or perhaps this? No? Okay, it doesn't matter. You're going to B tier anyway. And next up we have British Airways partner Finnair. And this F is a time-tested classic. And you can see the color scheme calls back to the Finnish flag, but it is really nothing too special. It is just a stylized letter F, so this airline's livery really cannot jump out and stand out among all of the other industry titans. So I really cannot afford to give it more than a B. And moving a bit further east, we have Aeroflot. This is one of the very last remaining airlines that still have all of its standard delivery with a metallic gray finish. And I think it is absolutely gorgeous. But sadly, its tail fin is nothing to boast at since it is just the Russian flag with a little bit of a stylization going on. And also, it seems like quite a bit of a waste of space. So yeah, there's no way I can afford to give it more than a B as well. And now we have Air France, which is another very, very sad victim of the oversimplification of the aviation logo design these days. It started with the absolutely banger, iconic hippocamp livery. Oh, I think that one definitely deserved to be on S tier. But then they decided to change it into this barcode blue, white, and red combination reminiscent of the French flag. But guess what? The blue, white, and red that you are using is also getting used in almost every single other country's flags. So there's really nothing that stands out for Air France, one of the biggest major global players. Absolutely saddening to see, and I originally wanted to give it a B, but I guess it has to go to C. And then we have Iceland there. Hmm, that's a pretty nice livery. Uh, nice little warm bits of gold on a field of blue. Oh, what? Oh, it's the old livery? What's the new livery like? Oh god, not this again. They decided to take out the gold again, didn't they? Oh, just another victim of oversimplification. This is absolutely monotonous and forgettable. And oh, did you notice that little stripe falling along the edge of the fin? Yeah, that changes based upon plane. So it is sometimes neon blue, sometimes it's neon yellow, sometimes it's neon pink. I think it makes a really, really ugly contrast with the very corporate and monotonous main logo. And they try to appeal to the hip kids, but I think it just ends up being a mess. Yeah, go to C tier, please. Well, here we go again. Good job, Lufthansa. You just destroyed another timeless icon. Why did you decide to take out the yellow, huh? Huh? Is this because you just don't like yellow like every single other aviation company and redesigning it by taking out all of the contrasting colors? I am just absolutely dumbfounded and speechless. 
The old one was perfectly fine. It has two colors and it is contrasting very well. Now you decide to take it out and just fill it in with white. Now you are just one of the many, many, many airlines that have a white bird on a blue background. Good job. If you want to make your airline more memorable, you failed utter pathetically. And yeah, in my mind, I still only remember the old logo that you had. And now I already forgot your new logo. So yeah, please go to C tier and I don't want to see you ever again. Oh, thank God. Thank you, KLM, for budging against this obnoxious trend of Eurowhite. Oh yeah, I need to explain. No, you don't need to because you have already just seen the past three airlines. They are all very, very big victims of this Eurowhite trend. A very, very white fuselage with just a very simplified logo plastered at the tail and big fonts in the front. Yeah, I really don't like that. Most of the people don't like that. These are Euro Whites. But thankfully, KLM is the last standing bastion in Europe against this ugly trend. Thank you, KLM. Every time I see this hue of blue, this baby blue, I just got reminded of the Flying Dutchman and I absolutely love it. Yeah, and the crown is also a timeless classic as well. Please make yourself very, very comfortable on the S tier. And now we have Scandinavian Airlines. Yeah, it may look very boring, very simple, another Euro-wide design. I think it is fine for this case because Scandinavian Airlines is supposed to represent the region instead of a specific country such as Sweden or Denmark or Norway. So it should be non-offensive and relatively broad. But overall, I really don't think it is anything more than a B tier. And here comes Swiss, an airline with an absolutely iconic design. And there's nothing I can fault them for. This is a representation of Switzerland. Yeah, a big, big cross on a red and white color scheme. But I really think that they should have done something more creative with them because Switzerland is much more than just a cross. But I also kind of understand because they are Swiss. So yeah, it is a good livery, but it only goes into A. Hola Iberia, today we're gonna learn a new Spanish word, okay? It is called pena. It means pity and shame. Why? Repeat after me. <clears throat> a multi-million dollar consulting process that takes years upon years. And second is that it's a two color scheme that is reminiscent of the old logo and also of the country flag color. A Euro white fuselage design, large font in the front. And this one does not even have good color proportions. What do you need that much red for, huh? This is absolutely pathetic. What a pena. Yeah, please. Go straight into sea with all of your amigos. And we begin with European budget airline with Ryanair. Yeah, seeing this logo invokes some kind of a primal feeling in everyone, doesn't it? Whether it is fear or arousal. But let me tell you, it is a good livery. Why? It has a nice color scheme, very contrasting. And also the Lady Harp hybrid is a very iconic Irish symbol that can be recognized near universally. So yeah, I think it is a really nice national symbol for Ireland, even though the plane is manufactured in the United States and then registered in Austria and staffed by flight attendants from Poland, it is still deserving of an A. And then EasyJet. What can I say? This is just bad. Absolutely bad. There's nothing I can talk about it. It's literally Control-C and Control-V your logo and put it like slanted towards the end of the tail fin. And that's it. You paint everything in your only color and it seems like very cheap cost cutting. I really don't like it. At least, you know, spend a couple hundred thousand dollars to design a nice looking logo so you do not have to plaster English letters every single time. No, okay, go straight into D then. And now we arrive into the Middle Eastern Titans. And let's begin with the biggest of them all, Emirates. Yeah, a lot of people praise Emirates for whatever, their luxury, their service, their route network, but let's admit this, okay? We can all agree their design kind of sucks. It is not very imaginative just to put the country's flag towards the tail fin. Okay, I do have to give them this though. They put their calligraphy-based gorgeous livery of the Arabic nature onto every single one of their engines, but I really wish that they have put it on the tail instead because that really invokes some kind of a mysterious Middle Eastern feel without compromising in the global quality kind of standard that they have built up. But yeah, sadly, they decided on this kind of livery and I really don't think it is very, very beautiful. So I decided to give them a C. And then we have Turkish Airlines, another big major global player. And I guess this one is also a little bit too simple. It is just a stork that nobody knows is actually a stork. I have to look it up because no way that's a stork, no. 
and then in a white and a red color palette. It has not changed ever since the airline's debut, but I really don't think it stands the test of time these days. But don't get me wrong, it is still a relatively acceptable livery, and it, it goes to B, I guess. And here we have Etihad, which I think is one of the very few cases of rebranding done right. The old Etihad livery is very dated and looks official and rigid. I do not like it at all. But the new one seems like someone from a very, very high-end Parisian designer school spent years upon his work and came up with this triangular motif. It overwhelms you with the brown, with the gold, with the light gray, and all kinds of triangle at the tail, and it is extremely unique. Not one single other airline can even compete with this kind of overwhelming triangular force. So I think it should go into A tier. And now we have Qatar Airways. This Qatari Ibex takes center stage of its livery, and I think it's a very good representative of the country as a whole. Because if you think about Qatar, you really can't conjure up some kind of image, unlike you think about France or you think about China. But also I have to say that the upper part of the fuselage is painted in this light beige color that reminisces you of this kind of desert feel. That is a nice touch, and also the burgundy color scheme of the company is very unique. I think it is definitely an A-tier candidate. And to finish up the Middle Eastern Airlines, we have Saudi Arabia Airlines, or as I call it, Saudia. It is a very nice design, don't get me wrong, the color scheme is absolutely prophetic in some way, right? It is gold, dark gold with dark blue. Oh, that looks so authoritarian. Very, very robust color. And also the scimitar with a palm tree and also the um, Arabic text just exudes this kind of Middle Eastern feel. And it immediately makes you recognize, oh yeah, this has to be the most powerful country in the Middle East. But the tail design is kind of misaligned in my personal opinion. It doesn't fit the shape of the tail very well. So it kind of looks a bit too rigid. So yeah, it goes into B tier. Now going to Africa, let's begin with Ethiopian Airlines, one of the biggest airlines on the continent. While I do like the font that they chose, the tail art is still just a mishmash of the color of the flag of Ethiopia. And also I still think there's quite a bit of a white space near the top, so I really don't think it fits rather well. So at the end, I decided to give it a C. And then we move towards the north into Egypt Air. It is one of the most beautiful liveries in Africa, to my personal opinion, because I really like the way they portrayed Horus and giving this god a rather bluish hue so that it represents the sky rather well. And also, it is ancient Egyptian mythology. Of course, it represents the country. And I really like the transition from a lighter hue of white into the darker shade of blue. So at the end, I think it deserves an A. And now the final candidate in Africa, South African Airways. I really, really like the font they choose. It is one of the best fonts I have ever seen in any single industry, let alone aviation. But it is kind of sad to see the tail is just a nice transplant of the national flag. But I really like the flag of South Africa anyway, so it is not that big of a detriment. And yet, they could have done so many interesting things with delivery, but they choose a Euro White. So yeah, I really can't give them much more than a B. And finally, we begin the tour of Asian Airlines with Air China. Yeah, you are seeing this tail right now? What kind of bird do you think it is? No? No. No. It is supposed to be a phoenix. Yeah, can you believe it? I can't believe it either, even though I know it is a phoenix to begin with. It looks more like a roasted chicken than, you know, any mythical bird. And also that cheat line on the fuselage it, near the bottom, it just doesn't strike me as a 21st century design. And indeed, it has not changed for quite a few decades. Air China desperately needs a redesign so that it fits the modern ethos a little bit better. It needs to be a little bit more streamlined, a little bit more modernized. But I don't know if it's gonna happen anytime soon. And as of right now, it belongs in the sea. And talking about sea, across from the sea, haha, is the Japanese airline ANA, All Nippon Airways. And they kind of just tell you that because it's literally plastered at the end of their tail at every single aircraft. This is one of the most boring designs I have ever seen. And it is kind of sad to see that because ANA has the best seat in the industry, the best service, a really nice route network, and it's not very, very expensive. If you check out my airline tier list video linked up here in the corner, you're gonna see that it is actually one of the best airlines in the entire world. And it is just sad that they have a really, really boring livery. Please go to the C tier where I hope you can jump out sometime soon. 
Air India has one of the cleverest design of their livery I have ever seen in modern aviation. You see the tail kind of looks kind of wonky right? What is this with this golden wing-ish thingy? Well if you take a closer look of the rear end of the aircraft, you're gonna see that the paint job specifically avoids a certain area and creates a white space. So if you look at it from the side, it is actually the Centaur from the old livery. And it is now portrayed as the logo of the airline. So you should not be looking at the tail, but the entire rear end of the fuselage as a whole. And also the golden wing is the chakra that used to represent a different part of a company that merged into this mainland conglomerate. So it is actually a very nice portrayal of the Indian culture while preserving its history. So it definitely deserves an A rating. And then we have China Airlines. This is one of the better designed logos out there and it has stood the test of time. You see the plum blossom not only exudes oriental charm, but it also simplifies the concept of delivery without compromising in its complexity. And also the background is one of my favorite. This kind of a tiny gradient from this purplish light blue all the way into white is very subtle, but definitely discernible. So yeah, I think it is one of the best liveries that kind of delivers you this kind of oriental charm without feeling compromised in modernity. It definitely goes into A tier. And moving on into Cathay Pacific, I mean, just look at this brushwing design. Anyone who came up with this design is destined to live on forever. The interesting green color they choose is not shared with any single other airline and thus making it extremely iconic. And the brush represents the calligraphy from the east, but the modernity that you can see throughout this entire elegant, sleek design also represents Hong Kong as a city of the world. And it is definitely an S-tier iconic livery. And then we have China Eastern. Yeah, I think comparing this livery that you see right now with the old livery back in the days, you can definitely see that this is a nice and welcomed modernization of a livery that has perhaps passed its prime. But it still preserves the swallow theme, just making it a little bit more modern and sleeker. And also, I really like the change they did to the parts of the color. However, just looking at it, it doesn't really represent Shanghai or China as a whole since it is just another one of the thousands of the bird deliveries, so I really cannot give it a top tier status. So it goes into A tier. Ah, China Southern. How dare you steal KLM's baby blue, huh? It is KLM's, how dare you? Okay, okay, I get it, I get it. It's a little bit darker, but how dare you, huh? Uh, but still, I think it is a very interesting design. The Kapok flower near the tail is really iconic as it is the city flower of Guangzhou. But it kind of feels like it is old, right? The design is a little bit too complicated. It is not sleek. It is not modern. Oh, right. Since its funding in 1988, they have never changed it. So yeah, it is kind of weird that it is one of the largest airlines in the entire world, the top 10 even by some metrics, it is still rocking a livery that is reminiscent of the 70s and 80s. So sorry, you need a lot of modernization, China Southern, and you should stay right now in the C tier. And meanwhile, you just have EVA. Yeah, this is what happens when you slap a cargo ship's logo onto the tail fin of an airplane. This is not imaginative, way too complicated, the colors are really weird, and also it doesn't represent where it comes from in any single way. It is just a corporate logo of a completely different industry. Yeah, I really don't get why they don't spend some money to design something else, given the fact that they spend a lot of money procuring the newest aircraft with the best service and the best seats and the best food. So sorry, in livery department, EVA, D tier, you go. As for Japan Airlines, this is a simple, elegant solution to something very complicated. This is pure Japanese charm at work. This crane reminds everyone of somewhere very far away, somewhere exotic but still very modern. And the JAL representing the airline is typed small but very visible on the body of the crane. And everything else is left blank. And not to mention, this circular red crane forms the center of a white canvas that is representative of the Japanese flag. And oh, don't forget, its competitor looks really, really, really stupid in comparison to the Japan Airlines. So yeah, of course, it deserves an A. Across the Sea of Japan on the Korean Peninsula, we have Korean Air. 
another aesthetically pleasing and culturally accurate airline livery. I really, really, really dig it. Yeah, in fact, while all of the European airlines are trying their hardest to sweating all over eliminating one of the last remaining two colors, these Asian airlines are just comfortably sporting their original colors with even more blue than KLM. Good job, Korean Air. It is very, very well done. A tier indeed. Malaysian Airlines. This is an airline with a relatively mediocre product, but a very nice livery. All of the Malaysian Airlines aircrafts sport one of the two versions of the common livery. One is bearing the Malaysian flag, which is very dynamic and very beautiful. And the other version is simply just the two stripe version of the company logo. Both of these versions I think are relatively elegant and they are very dynamic to the eye. So I really like it. I think it definitely deserves an A and whoa, 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 what's happening? No, no, not going to happen again. No, please go to B. Just get away. Get this thing out of my face. Go to B. And now let's take a look of its Southeastern Asian flag carrier cousin, Thai Airways. Oh, look at this. The Royal Orchid. It is so gorgeous. And it just exudes that kind of just superiority, you know, the royal purple. I don't get it. Like the color contrast of yellow and purple. This is just gorgeous. Not many other airlines use this kind of color because they can never just pull it as well as Thai Airways. There's really nothing to fault about this airline. Sure, there's everything else that is kind of wonky. The, the fleet, the age of the aircrafts, the service in the lower classes, and also their route network. Yeah, but that is all excusable now. Look at this beautiful livery. Oh, S tier, S tier, S tier. And staying within Thailand, we have the tiny domestic carrier of Nok Air. Yeah, it is a tiny player in the global world. I really want to include it because, well, I want to. It is so special. Take a look of their planes. These are so cute. Oh, look at that beak. And every single one of them is painted differently. This is because Nok means bird in Thai, and they basically centralized upon the design of the bird beaks near the front of the airplane to make it like a tiny bird. Isn't it so cute? Oh, this is so cool. And this is what I want to see in regional carriers because it is so impressive and memorable that people will go out of their way to research and perhaps fly on them. And I think it is extremely effective. Yeah, I've only seen one Nok airplane in the entire history of my travels, and I still remember it until this very day. And now, and I'm telling it to you, you're gonna fly it very soon, right? So yeah, this is classic small airline tactic to make a very memorable and lively livery, so it goes into S tier. And keep on moving on to the south, we reach Singapore Airlines. This is another icon of the industry. It has not been changed since its very debut, so you know it's gotta be good. And while all of the airlines are trying to eliminate the colors, Singapore Airlines logo is one of the very few rare cases that they added colors later on. It started as black and white, and now they added on the current blue and gold color palette. And I think it works very well. And while all of the airlines are trying to be sleek and smooth and aerodynamic in their design, Singapore Airlines remain in the stoic, angular, muscular kind of design in their logo. And I think it works out really well as well. So yeah, there's nothing wrong to fault it other than maybe perhaps it doesn't represent Singapore as much. So perhaps I'll just give it an A. Hainan Airlines, may the fortune winds blow upon you. Sure, it definitely represents that in the tail fin design, but I really don't think it represents China or Hainan province in any special way. And indeed, this was exactly the case as it was used for Hong Kong Airlines and many other subsidiary of the Hainan Airlines group. So it doesn't even have an identity of its own. It is just a corporate logo they slap near the end of all of their group projects. And since you can't tell where it is exactly from, it goes into B tier. And to start off with the final continent on today's tour of airline liveries, let's start with the biggest player in Oceania, Qantas. Yeah, look at this. This is gorgeous. There's nothing I want to do about it because what can you change about perfection? The flying kangaroo has been with us for more than half a century, and I'm pretty sure it will be with us for centuries more to come. Think about it, it is kind of simple as well, right? It's just two color design, and also it's kind of sleek and modern. 
But still, the flying kangaroo represents something much, much more than just a few very elegant ribbons and lines that you need to look up in the company's manual and PR reservoir in order to see what it actually represents. No, it is the complete opposite of that. You see the kangaroo, you know it is gonna take you to the land where the dingoes eat the pythons, eat the humans. Yeah, nothing absolutely wrong with this perfect design. Maybe a tiny gripe I have with the entire design and delivery is that the font they have been using is getting uglier and uglier. Hopefully they're gonna change it back, but right now they still deserve an S tier. And coming up to the second largest airline in the entire continent, Air New Zealand. This is one of the other very few airlines that decide to choose black as its main color scheme. And you can see that it is definitely paying off. The Maori art of the wind plastered at the rear is very gorgeous as a company logo. And also the recently added the silver fern to every single aircraft is a very representative symbol of the country as well. So it is one of the best homages it can pay to the country that it comes from. So it goes into A tier. And next up is Fiji Airways. Oh wow, look at this. Oceania seems to be on a roll now with bangers after bangers. The little woven arts at the top almost reminds you of the local tapestries and it really reminds you of this kind of getaway. Want to go to a tropical island in the middle of the Pacific and just look at the gorgeous scenery. Yeah, this reminds you of vacation, of relaxation, of paradise. And this is exactly what a small regional player should strive for. It makes you almost learn something about Fiji just by looking at it. And more importantly, it makes you want to go to Fiji to learn more about it. So of course, it goes into S tier as well. And to finish up the tier list, we have Air Tahiti Nui. Yeah, this is that gorgeous. This is flying perfection. I saved the best for the last for a reason. It almost looks like someone took all of the points that people do not like about Eurowhite and decided to do the complete opposite. Look at this gorgeous flower as the logo and the ripples it comes out and the different shades of blue, a little bit of a tropical color and also the local Polynesian art plastered near the entire rear half of the aircraft. And then you have the awe-inspiring font. There is nothing you can say about Air Tahiti Nui that can diminish my impression of this gorgeous paint job and it is the easiest S tier I've given in my life. So now that I have ranked more than 50 airlines all around the world in terms of how beautiful they painted their aircrafts, I really need to go out and touch some grass and talk to some people actually. But yeah, anyway, here is the adjusted tier list so that the left side of each tier is more beautiful and the right end is less beautiful. Do you agree with my take or there's something really, really important that you need to let me know in the comment section down below? And oh, don't forget to hit the like button because this took me quite a lot of effort to produce. And subscribe if you want to learn more about this crazy aviation world that we live in. And oh, if you want to check out another tier list, here is the tier list of all of the major airlines in the entire world. And here is a video about all of the weirdest flight routes that are currently operating. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope you can have a great day. See you around.